May we now call this meeting to order. Thank you to the New Jerusalem Singers for that musical selection. And to all our Zoom participants, please take this opportunity to mute your microphones and block your video unless you are called upon to speak or read. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening and welcome to another lecture given by members of the Springfield, Ohio Bible class. This is a school and it is not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and other foreign countries. The Springfield branch was established in the year 1935 and the president of our school here in Springfield is Dr. Rhonda Miller. Our vice president is Dr. Gurley Ramey, and our dean is Dr. Ronald Carr. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or out letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true an original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is inscrutable and incomprehensible. He is the ultimate substance and source, the limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, Everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state took on shape 
and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes this pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of our Bible class are, first, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without the distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical and occult, science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through, di through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known from the beginning. I'm sorry. <laughs> to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification 
in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. Before we call, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <laughs> we will begin today's session with prayer by Dr. Lamar Rhodes and scriptures by Dr. Jackie McCain. Dr. Rhodes. I'd say good evening to the class. Let us bow in our hearts and minds and give thanks unto Yahweh for this opportunity to assemble. Uh, and we pray, Yahweh, tonight as the speakers are called upon that you do the speaking through them so that our enlightenment might become greater, our faith in you might become greater, and our obedience in you become greater to how you really are and how you actually exist. We thank you, Yahweh, for sending that one unto us to tell us of this great vision and revelation, which was your son, Yahshua the Messiah, in whom we have faith in and our trust. And we just are so thankful for everything that he has done for us. And we want to keep in mind that we are in the ever presence of Yahweh at all times and that we pray that he keeps us in his divine guidance so that we be not misled by that mystery of iniquity and operation. All these things we give thanks for in the precious name, Yahweh, of your only begotten son, which is our savior, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight's scripture lesson will be 1 John, the third chapter. I will be reading it from a King James Bible and certainly true and correct name and title. 1 John, chapter 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for the sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Yahweh was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of Yahweh doth not commit sin, but his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of Yahweh. In this, the children of Yahweh are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of Yahweh, neither he that loveth his that excuse me, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hath his brothers, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. 
and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of Yahweh, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shut up up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of Yahweh in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongues, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, Yahweh is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward Yahweh. And whosoever, excuse me, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandment and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, this that we should believe on the name of the son of Yahshua and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby, we know that he abided in us by the spirit which he hath given us. That was First John, the third chapter. Let us all say hallelujah. Thank you, Drs. Rhodes and McCain. Before we call on our first speaker, We'd like to remind participants to keep their microphones muted and video blocked unless you are called upon to speak or are actively reading. Our readers for this evening will be Dr. Jackie McCain and Dr. Shirley Henderson. Each of our speakers will have 45 minutes. A sign will be shown briefly on the screen when there are five minutes remaining of your allotted time. Please look for your sign and acknowledge that you have seen it. At this time, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on for our first speaker from our Springfield class, Dr. Frank Lewis. Dr. Lewis. Good evening, everyone. I'm thankful and glad to be able to gather with the brethren in this class and uh, to testify this great divine vision revelation. And that is a great scripture lesson. I mean, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of Yahweh. And it doesn't appear what we shall be, but uh, we know that when he shall appear, said uh will be like unto him see mm-hmm. in other words you can receive an immortal glorified body when you become a son of yahweh or receive the gift of the holy spirit and uh man there's so many good things in there but we just got through a conference uh, uh what is the wrath and how do you escape it so um and when before we came into this school this we got to emphasize that this is a school and not a church and it came by way of a divine vision and revelation given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in 1931. And he said, uh, he said he wouldn't believe it if Yahweh hadn't showed it to him. So he could understand somebody saying, I don't believe that. But, um, you, but I, I do like how he said one time, he said, uh, you know, people don't believe in visions. He said, you will see one. Huh. That's what the universal revelation is. <laughs> you understand? Uh, yeah. That's a vision that everybody's going to be in attendance. Uh, <laughs> whether you've been in the body, out of a body, whether you were an angel that was cast out of heaven and now living in hell, uh, well, uh, he's going to appear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and universally to everyone. Mm-hmm. And if you be a true son of Yahweh, that means you've received the gift of the Holy Spirit, a true recipient of the Holy Spirit. 
uh, you're going to receive an immortal glorified body and be praising him throughout eternity. And he's going to show you more and more and more. And just like the world says, uh, God is love. Before mm -hmm. we came down to this school, we ain't never heard somebody say, well, yeah, he is love, but his wrath is just as great as his love. Did you ever hear anybody talk like that? I know I never did. <laughs> and so uh, when you look up wrath, it means anger. It also means punishment and divine chastisement. And so uh, Yahweh, uh, read Revelation. Uh, you might as well read 12 and 1. And you can get the dispensation. Uh, I guess the, um, the dispensation in ages. Uh, what Yahweh did. Uh, well, you'll see this chart here it says creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. The bottom says the cloud symbolize symbolizing eternity. Did we ever see that when you read in the Bible about a cloud and how the children of Israel were delivered by a cloud and how Yahweh spoke down from a cloud and then he said he would dwell in the cloud between the wings of the cherubims? Did you ever think that represented spirit? Mm -hmm. See, we've been taught so many great things in this school. Mm -hmm. And you have there, you have beginning on the left side and you have ending on the right side. Well, you might as well read, uh, read uh, Revelation 3 and 14. Now, this is the seventh assembly that he writes to here. Uh, John was told to write to the seven assemblies, which are in Asia. And this is the seventh one. Uh, you might as well get uh, the... Uh, tabernacle pattern because there's seven steps and this is the seventh assembly so it's representing the seventh step in the tabernacle pattern is the most holy place seven den denotes perfection and here's he's talking to this seventh assembly and this is what he says to them read that please 3 and 14 revelations 3 and 14 and on and unto the angel of the assembly of the lay of the sins write, these things saith the I am, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. Now, the faithful and true witness is Yahshua, but it's also when Yahweh took on shape and form as Elohim. And he says, that's the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. Okay, so go back to the dispensation ages chart, please. So when you see that beginning there, in the other words, Yahweh took on shape and form first before he could create anything. And as the Holy Spirit through Dr. Kinley said, uh, Yahweh went out of the creating business. But that is Yahweh in that spirit embodiment of Yahweh Elohim. Uh, who's seen in visions and revelation. That's why they're able to write the things that's in the Bible. The Bible came by way of divine vision and revelation. Um, he's the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. And the first thing that he made is the angelic creation. Okay. Uh, uh, and he created angels to serve, honor, obey, and glorify Yahweh. And we learned all that in this school. We ain't hear that from nobody else. This thing comes by divine visual revelation. Even this, like you would, we call this a timeline. Even though when he created these things in the realm of eternity, he didn't, uh, it's, it, it was without time. Uh, that's one thing about the creation. You know, when scientists, you know, they're all big and smart and they, they, they try to, they try to take the, the rocks and the, things in the creation and try to time it and um, uh, and they get big numbers like this creation's billions of years old and something's millions of years old you understand well the reason is because Yahweh's spirit he's the source and substance from which it comes from and he's eternal so when you try to physically time it you're going to get large numbers uh uh, because he's eternal and he's the substance from which it comes from. Uh, we learned all this stuff in this school. Uh, but let's go to, um, okay, okay. Read Revelation 12 and 1 now. Mm -hmm. 
Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, where you see that on the chart, uh, you'll see it on the day of Pentecost, either on the elementary chart or the Moses chart. Uh, you'll see after Yahshua Messiah's death, burial, resurrection, and outpouring the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, you'll see, you'll see it on the Old Testament, New Testament charts. So those are three charts right off the bat that you'll see what we're reading about there in Revelation 12 and 1. Uh, you see, right over, you see, yeah. Uh, when he poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, that was a woman clothed with the sun. And it says, uh, and the moon is under her feet, right? And one time I'm listening to a lecture, Dr. Kinley said, that's a long legged woman <laughs> being clothed in the sun and the moon under her feet. <laughs> well, the Yash Messiah had fulfilled the law and that's what that moon's representing. And so they're no longer under the law. He's fulfilled it, took it out of the way, died, buried, resurrected, ascended, and now he's poured out the Holy Spirit. And that's why the moon is under their feet, okay? Uh, but now, you know, if you really look at the beginning, uh, when Adam wasn't, when, he, when uh, Yahweh Elohim formed the man from the dust of the ground, breathed his nostrils the breath of light, and he became a living soul, well, when he did that, uh, wasn't the woman clothed with the sun? Because she was in him, wasn't she? Yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's also uh, the way it is with the angels. Look at the tabernacle pattern. Don't you see angels inside of there? Mm -hmm. Now, that's the tabernacle pattern, but it's representing Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe and so that spirit body of elohim that's not a hollow body just like there's vessels inside the tabernacle and angels inside this tabernacle pattern yahweh elohim this is as it's written at the top of the moses chart he's the he's the um, he's the archetype original pattern of the universe so if there was angels uh so when he says, I, so when you see that on the day of Pentecost, you see it with Adam, that the woman was clothed with the sun, then you know these are natural examples to show you that's the way it was in the angelic realm. They were clothed in the sun, see? And he saw a great wonder in heaven, okay? All right, read on, please. Second verse, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And oh, there appeared fell. another great wonder in heaven. Okay. Uh, now read the next verse there. And his so a great red grew. dragon. You right. understand? Now, they're using the physical to represent the spirit. That's not a physical dragon, if you know what I mean. Uh, 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 read on. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, and right there, his tail drew a third part of stars of heaven. And when you read Isaiah 9, 15, uh, it'll say the ancient and honorable, he's the head, the prophet that teacheth lies, he's the tail. So the tail that he drew those one third stars, that's really showing the lie that he told. And he drew one third part of the stars and that caused a rebellion in heaven. And then that's what caused the war. Read Revelation 12 and 7, please. 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon. Now you happened. see that? The one of the first. Now, you know, all this, I didn't even know that stuff was in the Bible before I come down to this class. I'd never even read the book of Revelation. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't hardly read hardly any of the Bible. So I know nothing about no Bible when I came down here. So, you, so the things I'm talking about, I must have learned something since coming down to this school. And you can learn it too. 
that's where we all learned this from is coming down here to sit down because every one of us before we came down here we didn't know anything mm -hmm. about Yahweh in truth and in reality and sure didn't know nothing about Yahshua the Messiah you understand uh, in other words well later on it says he's going to deceive the whole world he deceiveth the whole world but uh, here John he's looking back he's looking I mean he's back he, now he's over here <laughs> Where he is in the realm of time, he's 63 years from Yahshua's death on the cross. Mm, I wanted to show it time-wise. Uh, and so, uh, so he's in that fifth dispensation, <laughs> fourth age, called the present kingdom age. Holy Spirit's been poured out. He's 63 years from the Savior's death. And Yahweh catches him up, and he's, he sees all the things that are going to come to pass. You understand? As a matter of fact, he said he was in the Sabbath day. So he was in the seven, you know, he was in perfection there. He's over there he's seeing ahead of himself and looking back. And he looks past the physical creation back in the angelic realm. And he said there was war in heaven. One of the key things is there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. We learned that we learned was. That means there ain't none now. <laughs> there was, though. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And what else did it and say? the dragon that? fought in his angels. Yeah. And prevailed not. See, now it prevailed not. So that's that's one third, because it said his tail drew a one third part of the star. Those, and stars represent angels. That's in Revelation 1 and 20. It says the seven stars you saw on your right hand, they're the seven angels of the seven assemblies. And the stars are are what we call heavenly bodies in the physical heaven, but they're representing those glorified suns. And you can't count all the stars, so the stars are innumerable. So if they're, I mean, uh, the star representing that angels are innumerable. You can't count them all. Uh, just like he told Abraham, uh, I'll bless your seed as the stars of the heaven and the sands of the sea. And he mm -hmm. said, you know, you'd be a fool to go out there and try to count all the sands of the sea. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with that. It's showing that it's innumerable. See, and it's showing the in the spirit realm, he created an uh, innumerable heavenly host of angels. And the devil deceived one third of them, or the dragon, as it says there. His tail drew a one third part of stars. Well, um, yeah, it's going to tell you that here later on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it says uh, he prevailed not. Mm -hmm. Neither was his place found anymore in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, from him, well, where did he go from heaven? You might as well read Second uh, Peter 2 and 4. So, uh, and really what that was, what, that was the wrath of Yahweh to cast him out of heaven for his rebellion. And, and, and those angels were cast out with him. Mm -hmm. In other words, that was their punishment. They lost their first estate. And you might as well get Jude 6 just to back that up too. Read uh, 2 uh, Peter 2 and 4. 2 Peter 2 and 4. But if Yahweh spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved under judgment. Now you see that? Yahweh spared not the angel that sinned. So when they sinned, they was cast out into hell. So they went from heaven to hell. I'd say that was a punishment and put them in everlasting chains of darkness to be reserved. You understand? To be reserved at the end. He's got a lake of fire that they get to. Uh, that's their reward from being for going against Yahweh in that heavenly state and losing their first estate. And now they're down here lying to you. Matter of fact, you might as well, uh, so, so other person get Jude 6, if you got it, and the other yeah. person get First Timothy 4 and 1. Jude 6, and the angel, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, until the judgment of the great day. The judgment of the great day. See, mm -hmm. and they're in everlasting chains. Of, and they left their first estate. Well, what was their first estate? Heaven, because it said there was war in heaven. So that means they, they was there. Mm -hmm. 
but now they've been cast down to hell and they got they're put in everlasting chains of darkness. And that's why on the I Asher Aya chart, if you look at the mystery of iniquity, you'll see that he's got chains around his head. Mm -hmm. See, to show that he's in chains of darkness there. See them chains around his head? Okay. Uh, now it said chains. I guess this person only thought it was a chain. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, some other charts will have chains there, more, more than one. Okay. Uh, read. Uh, so you got the other one, 1 Timothy 4 and 1? 1 Timothy 4 and 1. And let's and get one. the dispensation ages with this, please. Yeah. 1 Timoth Timothy 4 and 1. Uh huh. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. That's Give right. It. So now, where he is saying this in First Timothy four and one is the same age we live in. It's after Yahshua Messiah's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, out of the Holy Spirit, and so the Holy Spirit saying the Spirit speaks expressly and directly. He's speaking. The Spirit speaking, not mankind. You understand? That's why we were taught by the Holy Spirit. Dr. Kinley, he said what really happened, he received Yahshua the Messiah. That's what really happened. So it was the Spirit speaking through that man. He knew what he was talking about. We ain't never heard nobody talk like this. Uh, you have to admit, uh, you never heard nobody talk like you hear in this divine vision revelation. He sure didn't see it. Uh, and, and like he said, too, he said, now, you know that ain't no man could have put them charts together. You know there ain't no man could have made charts like this or you'd see them everywhere. You'd see them in all kinds of churches if man could do it. But man ain't doing this. It was the Holy Spirit. So he said, the Spirit speak expressly that in the latter time, latter days. Now, see, we's in these latter days. That's what that fifth and sixth dispensation is. And they say, these are the latter days. These are the last age and time. See, it's so the latter days. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Now, that's what them spirits do. They try to persuade you that what they're saying is right. They're seducing. And we've seen people being seduced. And they walk right out of here and believe some stupid stuff. Hmm. Keep reading. Now, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And doctrines of demons. See, that means there are people, there's demons teaching. And what they're doing is, like when they, when they teach you to be water baptized, eat Lord's suppers, pay tithes and offerings on this side of the cross, that's a doctrine of a demon. Mm -hmm. When Yahshua Messiah said, neither is there salvation in the other, is none other name under heaven given among men whereby man can be saved. When somebody uses another name like Jesus or any other name, uh, that's a doctrine of a demon. When Yash <laughs> Why? Because Yahshua said he came to fulfill, and they're saying he instituted and told you to do it as a Christian example. Hmm. See? And then, then, when they come, then when you come into school and you hear the truth, and then somebody tells you, I don't have to go to the law and the prophets, that's a doctrine of a demon. I don't have to prove nothing I say. By the tabernacle pattern, that's a doctrine of a demon. See, and there's other ones. We won't just go into all of it, but uh, I think you get the point probably. Read, uh, hmm. I'll keep reading. Second verse. Verse two, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. And you know how he explained that? That those angels was cast out of heaven and said they were down in hell he said they're now demoted they're now called demons they was in heaven they're cast out now they're lying to you they're speaking lies and hypocrisy because they was in heaven they're cast out and they're lying to you so that you will not be saved through Yahshua the messiah that's their job is to preach false doctrine to you and see angels are ministering spirit and those demons that's why there's so many in the ministry telling you it's this way and that way. And as it says in the Bible, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Okay, then you have the physical creation. Uh, Yahweh creates the physical creation. Uh, 
and he says, well, I, I can't go there. I just have to move on. And he, and he made man, and he made, well, you know, the physical creation. You read about that in Genesis, the first chapter, about all those days of creation. And that's, those are six days, according to Moses' vision, atop of Mount Sinai, of the creation there. And and uh, says the seventh day he rested. Now, and that's, uh, he said in uh, Genesis 1, 26, he said, let us make man in our image after our life. And so you read in Genesis 2 and 7, he formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed his nostrils, breath of life. He became a living soul. Okay. And then in Genesis 2, 16, he says, uh, Yahweh Elam commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you can free to eat, but a tree of knowledge, good and evil, don't eat for the date you do, you'll surely die. Okay. And so you read in Revel, uh, well, you read in the, uh, I can't, uh, it's got to kind of fast forward, but you'll read that he put Adam in a deep sleep, took the rib in the womb and made the woman and then presented the woman to the man. They're in the Garden of Eden. And that's what we got on the elementary chart there. Uh, they're in the Garden of Eden. And then you read in Genesis, the third chapter, you read now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which Yahweh Elohim made. See, and I don't know if we, I don't think we read far enough there in Revelation, did we? Uh, after uh, we got cast. to the ninth verse. Yeah, keep reading from there, then. Okay, Revelations 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Deceiveth the whole world. Now here, here you got Adam and Eve there, and uh, that's the whole world right there, but he didn't deceive Adam. That's in 1 Timothy 2, 14, that Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So when it says the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, it said that dragon was cast out. That old serpent, what old serpent? That one in the third chapter of Genesis. It's revealing to you who that serpent is. It ain't no snake. The, that dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Mm -hmm. See how you have see how that revelation reveals those things to you, and Yahweh said, and he said, what did, what did Yahweh say? She said, we can eat all the trees of the garden, but a tree in the midst of the garden we can't eat for a day we do will surely die. And he might have said touch there too, mm -hmm. and he said you won't surely die. Go ahead and eat. You understand? In other words, he just called Yahweh a liar, mm -hmm. just like he lied in the angelic realm and deceived one third angelic host, called them to sin, and they're cast out. The woman was deceived. She ate, transgressed the law of Yahweh there. And then uh, Adam willingly died for his bride. Uh, she gave to him and he said, she gave me and I did eat. And Dr. Kimley said, that's a confessed sinner mm -hmm. because Yahweh's told him don't eat. And so what's happened? They're being cast out there. You understand? Uh, and, uh, and that's, well, and, and, and you'll read. Uh, from that time that they are cast out. And you read read uh, John 8, 44. See, this is Yahshua Messiah talking to the religious leaders back there. And they said, we're Abraham seed. <laughs> he said, Abraham, if Abraham was your father, you would do what Abraham did. But believe, you know, uh, uh, but go ahead and read 8, 44. John 8 and 34. 44, please. 44, excuse me. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now you see that? So, uh, uh, the devil's a murderer from the beginning. He murdered the 130 angelic host. And now he's down in the airplane lying to the woman, Eve, and he killed her. Uh, you understand? Uh, and, and, then, and, then, and then when they had children, he got in Cain and ended up Cain killing Abel, his brother, and then lied about it, saying, am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he is. So you see how he's a murderer and a liar uh, from the beginning. And so what his job is, is to lie to you and so that your soul will be damned. Okay. 
And that's why you need a savior. Okay, now get to Daniel chart just for a moment. Uh, you will see on that chart the same Adamic plate. And this time what you'll see on the right hand side, you'll see uh, the degeneration of the first man, Adam. And you see that serpent coming out, has the, the stars around his tail. And then he comes out, he's coming out down there, down below. And the first thing he did was make Cain the city of Enoch after he murdered or after he killed his brother. And uh, him and his wife went out and they built a city and called the city of Enoch. Well, that city became greater and greater. And uh, read Genesis 6 and 5. Let's go back. Oh, I will say this. You see that hammer and sickle at the top? That's Russia. So you see how he's got Russia in there? Now, do you see, do you see, um, we'll get John 10 and uh, 10 and uh, 9. Uh, uh, yeah, the hammer and sickle represents Russia. And so uh, you see, do you, yeah, read John 10 and 9. Go back to the dispensation and ages. Uh, just like it was a murder and a lying going on, there's a guy murdering babies, people, and he's lying to his people that what he's doing about it. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a murder and a liar? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you got to 10 and 9, please? Of yeah, John. John 10 and 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Okay, Yahshua's the door. According to the pattern, the door is the fourth step. We're in the fourth age. The fourth mm -hmm. step, that's where the high priest was anointed at. Here's the fourth age. Yahweh's appoint, is, 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 is uh, anointing man with the Holy Spirit. So Yahshua said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. So through Yahshua Messiah, you can receive salvation. Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. Acts 4 and 12, it says, neither is there salvation any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby man can be saved, see, or must be saved. And so Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. That's the only name of salvation. That's, what's, that's what has to be preached in this age. Uh, the gospel of Yahshua Messiah in his name. And that will get you through the door. <laughs> or that will give you the recipient of the Holy Spirit when you believe him. Okay. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Um, okay, keep reading. 1010. 10. Uh, John 1010. 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am now. Does that sound familiar? The thief is the devil and his demons, and he cometh to what? He cometh not, but for to steal. And All to he kill. comes for is to steal. See, they're trying to steal them people's country, <laughs> trying to steal land. You understand? And hmm. take it for their own. See, the thief cometh not but to steal. What else? And to kill. To kill. Are they killing out there? Hmm. Yeah. Read. And to destroy. And to destroy. Did you see destruction on the TV? Hmm. Yeah. 40 days of it. You understand? And it's just showing you how the satanic spirit does not respect life. Mm. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's really doing that to your soul by lying to you. And that's why this truth is so important. This true gospel of the kingdom to deliver you from that. Okay, keep reading. I, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Yeah, so the devil comes to steal your soul, to kill your soul, and destroy your soul by his lies and deception. But Yahshua Messiah come to give life and give it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. See, he gave your physical life, and he's given, he can give you eternal life if you believe him, and that's more abundantly, ain't it? Yeah. So read Genesis 6 and 5 now. Now, what this is, is at the end of the antediluvian age. You have uh, the woman being deceived, Adam ate, and that brought in the age of conscience. And Adam all died. You understand? So what are you going to have? You're going to have a uh, man is buried. And, and read six and five. Uh, 
Genesis 6 and 5. And Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it yeah. was And does that sound familiar? Now that's the end of the antiluvian age. And Yahshua said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall be at the end of the, uh, of the world. Mm -hmm. And we're at the end now. And is every imagination and thoughts of the intents of the heart only evil continuously? Mm -hmm. To those that don't have the Holy Spirit, they are. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of weaknesses, go wickedness going on. You understand? Mm -hmm. People saw that stuff in the 1940s with Hitler. And they thought that will never happen again. We're going to have an international law not to do that anymore. Well, you saw, and one of the international things in, of international law is that you should not invade a country when you are not being provoked. And, and that's what that fool broke the first, he broke the first law of international law and he's been breaking all of them since. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, it just shows you the satanic spirit. He's lawless, okay? Uh, so now what Yahweh did because of all the wickedness that was on the earth, he, 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 he made a flood. That's the wrath of Yahweh to destroy all mankind off the face of the earth. But you know what? He gave a way of escape. Yeah. He give a man a vision, tells him to build an ark, tells him to warn the people that there's going to be a flood and you need to get in the ark. Mm -hmm. And anyone that was in that ark, they resurrected. They, uh, they was floating on top of them waters. They resurrected, ascended, and sat on Mount Ararat starting up a new age. You understand? So there's a way of escape. That ark was the way of salvation. You understand? Okay, coming on down through. You'll find out in uh, Genesis 19, there's, a, there's Sodom and Gomorrah there. And then men was homosexuals. You understand? And uh, he, there they were judged by two angels. And then Yahweh sent down fire and brimstone and burned up Sodom and Gomorrah. And Sodom and Gomorrah is now what you call the Dead Sea. It's the lowest part of the earth. It's 1,260 feet below sea level. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's the wrath of Yahweh. You understand? Go get the Moses chart. Down there with uh, Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's got the children of Israel in bondage. Yahweh said, let them go and serve. You know, he sent Moses down there, got the true name of Yahweh, and told him, you let the children of Israel go. And Pharaoh said, I don't know Yahweh, neither will I let the children of Israel go. Yahweh poured out mm -hmm. 10 devastating plagues. That's the wrath of Yahweh. And he executed mm -hmm. judgment on all of them. And see, that's what all these floods, that we got floods like we ain't never seen. You got mm -hmm. hurricanes 200 and some mile per hour. These are, that's the wrath of Yahweh. This, this, uh, this uh, pandemic, that's the wrath mm -hmm. of Yahweh. You don't want to believe his name? You understand? Hmm. He sends a he sends a disease there where you can't call on his name and you will die. You understand? Uh, and uh, you know, and then you got people lying about all kind of things about that. You understand? Hmm. Uh, and then the the stuff we're seeing at the end there, this is all showing uh, Yahweh's wrath. You understand? Them tornadoes. They ain't never seen tornadoes as many are flying off. You understand? Uh, they set records every year. Forest fires out in California, they, they, they used to have a fire season. Now it's all year round. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's the wrath of Yahweh coming upon the earth. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh, okay. So let now, so you know what faith, the children, Yahweh delivered the children of Israel by death, burial, resurrection. The death, they had to eat the lamb, yes. they keep the Passover feast, and the angel in the cloud leading them, and they resurrected into the wilderness. Now, Pharaoh and his host tried to come through the Red Sea, and Yahweh uh, uh, caused the waters to go back and destroyed Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. Now, that's the wrath of Yahweh. How do you know that? Get Genesis, I mean, Exodus 15 and 1. This is the song of Moses. And we're just going to read a little bit and then drop down quick. Because we, I know time's starting to uh, uh, get away there. Read. Exodus 15 and 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Yahweh and spake, saying, I will sing unto Yahweh, for he hath triumphed gloriously. 
the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Yahweh is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Now you see him singing because they've because Pharaoh's hosts were overseed, overthrown in the Red Sea, and he said, Yahweh's become my salvation, or Yahweh is salvation. That's Yahshua. In Acts 14, 13, he said, Stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. And that was Yahshua back there doing that for them. Great mystery. See how they're saved in Yahshua? <laughs> or by Yahshua, or being led by Yahshua. See, but now read the seventh verse. And in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. See, thou brought forth thy wrath. That's Yahweh's wrath. And that was him destroying them in the Red Sea, the enemies of the children of Israel. Okay. Uh, we, you know, when they built the golden calf, 3,000 fell that day it's because of his wrath. He told them, don't worship nothing else. Mm -hmm. uh, you understand? Don't make no image of nothing. They did. And then uh, and he ended up, uh, they broke those laws and he and, and they didn't enter into the promised land. He killed them off and the new birth went over there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the new birth went over to Canaan's land and built two golden calves. You understand? So <laughs> showing you how how power that devil water don't drown out the devil. Right. He cause that's why you ain't, you know you know people say water washed away sin. You know there wouldn't have been no sin after the no, the flood of Noah because they would have washed it all away, <laughs> wouldn't it? you? Understand? And John the Baptist would have done baptized it away from people, and then he wouldn't even need the Savior because water washed away sin. But you see how people get tricked and and get persuaded to believe false doctrine. Okay. Uh, I got to move. Get, uh, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> uh, read Nahum, first chapter. Uh, other one, get um, Zechariah 1.18. Just get a couple of them. We got to run. Might take a while to get Nahum, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Zephaniah 1.18. Uh and then also Zechariah 7, 12, and 13. Or 7, 11, 7, 11, and 12. Nahum 1 and 5. 1 and 1. Oh, Nahum or 1, 1 and, and 2. 1. Start that because we don't need all them names. <laughs> Nahum 1 and 2. Yahweh is jealous and the Elohim revenges. Yahweh revenges and is furious. Yahweh would take vengeance on his adversary and he reserveth wrath for his enemy and he reserveth wrath for his enemies now one of the things with enemy is uh you, psalms 139 20 i'm just going to quote it he said thy enemies take thy name in vain so he's reserving his wrath for his enemies you don't want to worship yahweh in spirit and truth in this age through yashua messiah he's going to take his wrath on you and that's his anger. And really what that is, is the lake of fire. Okay. Oh, boy. I know I, I got to go. Uh, read Zechariah. one and five, yeah? Mm -hmm. Read the fifth Zechariah. verse, please. Zechariah one and five. No, she's at Nahum one and five. That's where we were. Yeah. Fifth verse. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burnt at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. It's a Who prophesy of him going to burn the earth up. You understand? What did the rest of it say? Excuse me. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And That's who right. can abide it, in his fierceness? Of and that his indignation anger? is another part of wrath. And, and it says the fierceness of his anger. That's mm -hmm. what wrath means is his anger. What is he angry about? He done made you in his image and likeness and you want to just worship something other than that. Especially after he tells you the truth when you come down mm -hmm. to school. You're going to get the wrath on you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I can't. His fury is poured out like fire and the rock. Yeah, I, no, 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 no. Okay. I can't. Okay. I got to move. Get John 336. I got to get because I know, I know the uh, clock's on us. 
John 3.36. Read that. John 3.36. He that believes. Another one gets Matthew 24. No, 25.31. Go ahead. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Yahweh abideth on him. See, you don't want to believe Yahshua Messiah? That Yahshua Messiah is saying the wrath of Yahweh abideth on you. You understand? But you can have eternal life through him. See, in other words, you can escape the wrath of Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. Read uh, 2531. Matthew. Matthew, Matthew 25 and 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, okay. as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. That's, that's right. Now here's Yah, get the elementary chart. See, after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, you see him up there sitting on his throne after mm -hmm. he poured out the Holy Spirit. He ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit. He's sitting on his throne. Now you see the, and they're preaching the gospel of Yahshua Messiah ever since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And what's happened is you're being, he's separating the sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. Did it say the sheep's on the right hand? Did you read that part yet? Read the next part. He put Verse the sheep on the right hand and put the goats on the left hand. Verse 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Mm -hmm. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So when you believe the true gospel of the kingdom, Yahshua Messiah, and you receive the Holy Spirit, you're translated into the kingdom. And Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but it's righteous, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So those are those on the right-hand side are the ones that believe Yahshua Messiah, and that's received his righteousness, which is the Holy Spirit. He's the only righteous one. Then read 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye curse into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. You see that? So the ones on the left-hand side that don't believe Yahshua, they're, they're, they were called goats, stubborn, or they go at everything, go at, goats. <laughs> he, said, he said he's going to put you in everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm. You understand? In other words, they're going to go to the lake of fire, and you are because you don't believe Yahshua the Messiah. Now read 47 or 46, whatever the last verse is. Verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. There you go. You see that? So there's either going to go to the lake of fire or be or receive eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. See, okay. Uh, and that lake of fire is the wrath of Yahweh. Now read Romans 5 and 9. Mm -hmm. no five, read read romans 1 16 romans 1 16 mm -hmm. for i am not ashamed of the gospel of of the messiah for it is the power of yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the jew first and also to the greek that's right. So Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, Yahshua the Messiah, for it's the power of Yahweh. That's Yahweh's power unto salvation to everyone that believeth. By believing that, you can, your soul can be saved. Uh, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Read on. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So by believing Yash, the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, that's the righteousness of Yahweh. You can receive the Holy Spirit and have your soul saved. I see the five minutes. Yep. Read on. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven. See, not going to be. It's revealed from heaven. Read. 
against all impiety and unrighteousness of men who held the truth, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Yeah. When people know, like the uh, Holy Spirit through Dr. Kinley went down there, it was in Vatican, roll down the charts. And, and Pontiff Gramelian said, uh, I see you teaching the true name mm. of the Heavenly Father. Now, and, and for them not to be teaching Yahweh, they're holding the truth in right and unrighteousness. But you know what we do? We're going to hold the truth in righteousness because we're going to preach the truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, uh, because that's what will save the soul of somebody. See, and, but the, the wrath of Yahweh is revealed. And that's why all these things are being poured out on mankind because they don't want to believe the truth you understand uh okay now that's the wrath of yahweh but the the biggest wrath is going to be the lake of fire see okay let's go uh get uh romans five and nine other one get first thessalonians one and ten mm -hmm. romans five and nine much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. That's right. Now people say, I'm saved, I'm saved. What are you saved from? He saved Jesus, <laughs> saved me from my sins. Well, what happened was there was never a man called Jesus. It was Yahshua the Messiah that is the savior of the world, and he's the one that 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 that, that is your savior, and he did die for the sins of the world. And he was buried and he resurrected and he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit, and he can. And when you have the true gospel preached to it, you can be sealed with the Holy Spirit and that will save your soul. See, but real, so he already saved you from your sins 1900 years ago. You got to come into class or be taught and, and, and see these things. And that was in the scripture lesson today too. But I don't have time for that because I'm trying to finish it up. But it says he's saving us from his wrath. See, you're you're being saved from the from having your soul damned throughout eternity in the lake of fire. That's what Yahshua Messiah is doing. And you know what? Somebody said, "Well, you don't tell people how to be saved down there." And they, he go to Acts sixteen and thir thirty when that Philippian jailer uh, the, the, was going to kill himself, and he asked them. And when Paul said, "Don't do it," he said, "Well, what should I, sirs? What should I do to be saved? Believe Yahshua Messiah, and you and your household be saved." See. Uh, and and it's more than just saying I believe. It's a there's a there's a way of life, a way to walk and talk and preach and tell people the truth. You understand more than just run your mouth. Right. Okay, you got First Thessalonians one and ten. First Thessalonians one and ten, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Yahshua, which delivered us from the wrath to come. You see how Yash Messiah delivers you from the wrath that's coming? You understand? He's saving. That's what soul salvation is all about. Yahshua is Yahweh is salvation. Read what? 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. 5 and 9 of 1 Thessalonians. For Yahweh hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. And in Revelation, the 20th chapter, it says, blessed are he that hath part in the first resurrection. He says, on which the second death hath no power, showing the second death is the lake of fire. You read that in the later on down and he's judging them. And, and when he judges them, uh, those that are not written in the book of life shall be cast in the lake of fire, which is the second death. Read Revelation 21 and uh, 8, uh, 21, 7 and 8. Revelation 21 and 7. He that overcometh shall, shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. And you could have been that before. You could have been a liar. You could have been an adulterer. You could have been an idolater. But but when you come to this school and Yahshua changes you and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you're saved from that and, and you receive eternal life. But if you but the people continue being liars and idolaters and all that, you'll go to the lake of fire. That's the wrath of Yahweh. All praise go to Yahweh and to his son Yahshua. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. 
We'd like to call on for our second speaker this evening from our from our Orlando, Florida class, Dr. Sheree Williams. Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams. Good evening, class. Can you hear me? Yes. I thoroughly enjoyed the testimony of the previous speaker, and I'm always grateful unto Yahweh, our Elohim, through Yahshua the Messiah, for another opportunity to come and sit under this great divine vision and revelation. Um, The previous speaker uh, said a mouthful mm -hmm. and it's just, you know, it, it, this is where we are. We're at the end of this present kingdom age. We're at the end of the sixth dispensation, which opened up with the divine vision and revelation given to the founder. And Yahweh is just leaving each and every one without an excuse. Uh, for not knowing him. And he's laying it out all, you know how we say, uh, let's have a powwow and let's lay it all out on the table. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you know, all the, the family members, whatever, you know, we used to have family meetings. Let's, let's lay it all on the table. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what Yahweh is doing down here now. He's just laying all the cards, if you will, using a term on the table. And telling you like it, I S is, I S is, <laughs> is. <laughs> I'm Southern, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so mankind just don't have no excuse. You know what I mean? And uh, I was able to, thanks be to Yahweh, Elohim through Yahshua, uh, attend the the seminar in Chicago uh, on YouTube, and. Um, and that was so beautiful how he brought that out on this evening. You know, to me, it just summarized the seminar for me within myself. You know, it summarized it. But, you know, um, let's go over to, um, I think it's Second Peter. What do I want, you guys? I want Second Peter, uh, the third chapter, starting at 10. And the previous speaker um, touched on this. He didn't have this particular passage read, but he touched on it coming down through the ages, talking about, um, you know, Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah and all that. Um, and, it's, and, and the Holy Spirit through Peter is, is also working with those same witnesses. Uh, you got it there, 2 Peter 3 and 10. 2 Peter 3 and 10. Mm -hmm. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The okay, earth hold, hold it. Hold it right there. Thank you. So he says now, the day of Yahweh shall come as a thief in the night. In other words, the world, the entire world, has no excuse, no reason why they don't know Yahweh. I owe him through Yahshua the Messiah as he really is and as he actually exists because Yahweh just went bankrupt. You know what I mean? Uh, in 1931 by giving the founder this great divine vision of revelation. And as the previous speaker said, he went right on into Vatican City itself. You know, we know we've had three ecclesiastical peace missions, wherein these charts will roll down to the heads of the world religiously, to the heads of the world politically. You know what I'm saying? And it's another one I'm leaving out. I'm thinking about those three uh, frogs. I think it's- Economic. Uh, econ no. Thank you, economically. Thank you, uh, Dr. McCain. You know, so the world has no excuse. Because this vision and revelation, the charts and everything have been laid out uh, to the heads, mm -hmm. you know, first. And then when, when the, the deans went out and everything, I know I could testify right here in Orlando, you know, the seven uh, page letter was sent out 
to the heads of Orlando, such as your uh, religious heads, your political heads, you know, like your governors and your, your, your uh, uh, city commissioners and all that kind of thing, your preachers and whatnot. We saturated uh, this area and invited each and every one to, to, to come to class, you know, and I know that that went on and maybe not with the seven uh, page, page letter, but maybe on the radio, maybe on TV, you know, whatever the case was, everywhere that, that we went, uh, the area was saturated with the truth. And, and, and you know, on, on the media that was available at that time, you know, but now Yahweh just have revved this thing up even more now, even more. I mean, we used to have television and we still do. We used to have, you know, uh, programs and stuff, cable vision programs and radio programs and all that kind of thing like that, you know, uh, um, but now look at look at Zoom, you guys. I mean, this thing is worldwide. Yep. You know, when we when you know, like on Sunday morning, seven o'clock, we have the international class. You know, and we have brethren that's in class from England, from Australia, from Canada, Jamaica, Bahamas. Africa. Africa. You know what I mean? I mean, and we're all present at the same time hearing the same gospel being preached by Yahshua the Messiah from all over the world. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So the world, listen, mankind just does not have no excuse. And that's how we got our brother Sasha. That's how he came in. And he's a Russian from a, a, a Jewish Russian guy. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that just right. But in other words, he's Jewish and he's from Russia, okay? But that's how he came in contact with the teaching, through Zoom, through YouTube. You know what I'm saying? But he's over in the States and everything, you know, and it came out at the seminar that he stayed several times with uh, um, uh, the dean up there in Green Bay. You understand what I'm saying? Several times he just opened up his homes. He said, that's his brother. That's all of our brother. You know what I mean? And so, you know, it's just wonderful to me to see how that when y'all think back, think back about Dr. Killing when he had the vision. And when they ended up leaving Springfield, where you got where you guys are now, and going out to California. Remember, he said he was going out there because he wanted to get this this uh, knowledge and understanding in the movies, because that was the biggest media at that time was the big silver screen. You go, you get it. That's how you could reach the masses at that time. You know what I mean? So, so now look where it is. Mm. I mean, the world wide web. Oh my goodness. And Yahshua said it. He told his disciples, that he was going to make them fishermen of men. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, because many of them were fishermen from a natural standpoint. And they just dropped their nets and followed him all through, through the hills and whatnot. You know, everywhere he went, you know, he said, drop your net and follow me. Or, you know, close your doctor's office, follow me. Whatever the case was, you know what I'm saying? And, and they did because he selected the 12 men. But I'm saying, all I'm saying is that you could see the mercy. We talk about his mercy. That's over in Psalms. His mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, through Zoom and YouTube and all of that. I mean, World Wide Web. That's what it's called. And right in your living room, you know, you could be in any class in the world, right in your living room. <laughs> and Yahweh did that. And that's to leave mankind without no excuse. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and finish where you are. Uh, start starting again at 10. I'm going to hush. Let you read. Second Peter 3 and 10. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, mm -hmm. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The mm -hmm. earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Mm -hmm. 
Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conduct and righteousness? It says, what manner of persons ought we to be seeing that it, we're right on the brink of this? Where the elements shall be burned up, the, the heaven and the earth and everything, you know, shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought we to be seeing that we're right on the brink of it? We mm -hmm. at the tail end of the sixth dispensation. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, that priest in that tabernacle and in that temple on the day of atonement when he went into that most holy place. You know what I'm talking about? And so you just picture the, the, the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, like that priest going in there on the day of atonement that third trip in there. And mm -hmm. when he stepped on in there, you understand he had to part that veil, right? That second veil. And he, all of his body is in there except for that one foot, right? Mm -hmm. So here we are, we're like, as, as it were, I'm just using words, riding in on that one foot that's behind that's still in the holy place. And he lift, it's, it's lifting now. It's lifting, this is where we are. And bam! It's in the most holy place and the veil shut, that's the door being closed and it's over with. He said he's he gonna pull the curtain. You get what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. And that's where we are. We, that, that priest getting ready to put that, that second foot in that most holy place as it were. You understand? And that's all said and done. It's mm -hmm. over with. That's how, that's how in, intimate it is, the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. So what manner of persons ought we to be? And it says there, in all holy conduct and conversation. And that's both, that's both versions. Do you understand what I mean? In all holy conduct and conversation. In other words, your thoughts, your words, and your actions or your deeds must be on one accord. Hold it right there and go over to, and it was brought out, I heard this at the seminar. Uh, I think it was First Timothy uh, 1 and 9. I think that's what, what she had it read. That was Saturday morning. The last speaker. Can't call her name. First Timothy uh, 1 and 9. With no the blue hair. <laughs> the blue hair y'all know who I'm talking about now <laughs> not read it sweetie first timothy one and nine knowing this that the law is not made for the righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient okay the, mm -hmm. now see she was bringing that out you know at the seminar right that the law was not made for the righteous man but for who but for the lawless and disobedient for the lawless and the disobedient now mm -hmm. that's why when you go over there in galatians the fifth chapter the 22nd verse and you're talking about those nine fruits of the spirit and when you get all the way down to the last one it say against such there is no law mm -hmm. i used to wonder about that I wonder why it says that <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when she brought that out, I said, oh, I was connecting the dots, you know. I said, mm -hmm. that's why it says that in Galatians. The Holy Spirit through Paul said that. Against such there is no law. Because if you got the fruits of the Spirit dwelling in your soul, you understand, which is Joshua the Messiah in you, your own hope of glory. You understand the gifts of the Spirit dwelling in there. The great and precious promises dwelling in there. You understand all of these are attributes of Yahshua the Messiah, the nine principal divine attributes. You get what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. All of that is, is dwelling in you and you're walking upright before Yahweh and before man. You get what I'm saying? You're not lawless. You're not sinful. And I think it was in the scripture lesson. It said that, um, that, um, that the righteous don't sin and can't break the law or something like that. I think it was in there. I think it was in there. But finish where you are, uh, Dr. McCain. First Timothy 1 and 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for mm -hmm. the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers, of fathers and murderers, of mothers, 
for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for man stealers, for liars, for perjurious person, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed Elohim, which was committed to my trust. Absolutely. So now see the previous speaker was talking about that sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. The difference between a sound doctrine and a false doctrine. You get what I'm talking about? You yeah. see, we just don't have no excuse down here now. You see? That's why uh, 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 Dr. Kelly says down on, on SoundCloud that the law and the prophets are the keys. But the scriptures, which are the law and the prophets, alone and by itself is not enough. You have to have the guidance of Yahshua the Messiah, who is our teacher, who is our savior, who is our comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, who is our husband. You get what I'm saying? You have to have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You understand? When you're going into the law and the prophets, which are our keys, he says it there on that SoundCloud. You get what I mean? And so now he said he, he shared with the body that Yahweh. Uh, made him understand that vision that he's that seventh angel. And say in the voice, uh, the sound of the voice of the seventh angel, say the mystery of Yahweh should be finished. You understand? And he mm -hmm. says, now all the mysteries have been revealed down here now. You understand? By this divine vision and revelation. We just, there is nothing that you might want to know about your creator that has not been answered by this great divine vision and revelation. All the mysteries of Yahweh have been revealed now. You get what I mean? By this great divine vision and revelation, leaving all mankind without an excuse. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now we don't want to be like, uh, I shared this in Orlando recently. We don't want like Yahshua said in the, in the parables in two different places. He said, with your mouth, you do confess me, but your heart is far from me. In other words, you're saying one thing, but you're doing something else. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Uh-uh, that ain't gonna cut the mustard. And then in another place, he said, what was that other example I gave? Uh, that Yahshua talked about. Um, mm, 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 mm. Oh, when they're going to say at the end, say, hey, Master, oh, Yahshua, didn't we do, uh, Dr. Kelly even said this on SoundCloud, didn't we do wonderful things in your name? Didn't we do this and didn't we do that? And didn't we do the other? Oh, marvelous things in your name. And he's going to say, Get thee behind me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Because why? Their thoughts, the words, and their deeds are not on one accord. That's a unity. You get what I mean? You can't say one thing and do something else. That's a hypocrite. That's what Yahshua called them boys over there. You see, when he was, he was bawling out the scribes and the Pharisees over there, he called them hypocrites and, and, and whatnot, whitewashed sepulchers and all that uh, full of dead men's bones and all that kind of thing but yet and still they decked out on the outside you know uh, 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 dressed all up in, 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 in beautiful colors and this and that you understand what I mean but yet and still full of dead men's bones so that's that that uh, saying you, you did many wonderful things in the name you understand but ain't got no righteousness nowhere in there at all no light in the, in the vessel it's all about showboating and and and, and play, trying to be a men pleaser and all that kind of mess. Yahshua is not about that. You see, that's why Dr. Kelly say, listen, hew to the line and let, let the chips fall where they may. Now, if you hate me for telling you the truth, then you just go out to hate me. You understand? Because I'm going to tell you the truth. If you knock my teeth out, he talked about them, how the Muslims had beat him up and everything. And he came, he went back to, to the place. And the man said, are you coming? <laughs> you coming back over? He said, well, sure I am. You know, and he said, that's before he had bodyguards. Oh, y'all, y'all need to listen to those testimonies on that SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. I have been so edified by them. And, and, and I just find it to be a blessing 
to to because I came in class 77, uh, one year uh, after he had uh, died or, or he didn't die. Because you know what? If you uh, are full of the Holy Spirit, you in the body of Yahshua the Messiah, you've been translated into the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, you don't die. You, you just take the flesh off and you mm -hmm. in, in the altar of incense in principle now. You understand? Uh, like it's read in Revelation the sixth chapter, saying, how long, how long? And what is the how long? How long, how long to the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah? Whereas uh, the whole family in heaven and in earth okay. shall be named by that one name. You see? Because in, I think it's Ephesians 1 and 9, we keep going to 1 and 9s, don't we tonight? Ephesians <laughs> 1 and 9, talking about how he going to gather all things together into one. Pick that up. Hold it right there where you are. I know I got y'all holding two things, right? But that's okay. I, I have to roll. When he, when he gave it to me, I got to roll with it. Ephesians 1 and 9. And we're going we to end right on time, too. Ephesians 1 and 9. Having made mm -hmm. known unto us the mystery of his will. Hold it for a second, Dr. McCain. Hold it for a second. Having made known unto us. Now, didn't Yahshua the Messiah say that eternal life is to know yeah. the only true El, who is Yahweh, our Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent, right? And mm -hmm. over there in Colossians 1, 26, have been made known unto us uh, 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 the riches of this mystery. You understand? That's what he's doing down here now. So it's, read it again. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, mm -hmm. according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Okay, that's good. So mm -hmm. now that's the purpose of Yahweh. It's to gather all things in heaven and on earth. What do you mean in heaven and on earth? Talking about the brethren that's translated into the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah right now. That's in the body of Yahshua. That is the assembly of Yahshua the Messiah. You get what I mean? Those holy ones, the obedient, right? See, at the universal, because some of us going to be walking around here still. We're going to be in the flesh, walking around in the kingdom, on the earth, mm -hmm. at his universal revelation. Some of us will be, uh, uh, have natural life. You understand? Walking around this flesh. Some of us will be. And, but many of them, many of our brethren have been called home. They, they're in the altar of incense saying, how long, how long? Because at the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. all the brethren that have gone on, have dropped the flesh off, you understand, from Dr. Kimmel all the way down, that's in, that was in the kingdom before they took the flesh off, that's in Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. all them brethren, you see, listen, they're resting now, and they say, okay, now how long, how long, you know, they want to be glorified, but they can't be glorified without us. I'm talking about mm -hmm. us as in the obedient in Yahshua the Messiah, those translated into the kingdom. You understand? So this is, he's, he, and he's revealing it, that he's going to gather all things in one that's in heaven and on earth, even in him, in the Messiah, right? So now if the righteous that's in heaven, talking about the brethren have dropped the flesh off, you understand what I'm saying? Took the flesh off. You understand? And those of us on the earth plane translating to the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. Being gathered in the Messiah in one. You understand what I mean? That's why you read over there. It say the whole family in heaven and in earth shall be named by that one name. So if he gathering them in heaven and in earth in the Messiah, What's the Messiah's name? His name is Yahshua. You get what I mean? So now if he's gathering everything, I'm talking about righteousness now, in heaven and in earth, in the Messiah, and the Messiah's name is Yahshua, that's how that the whole family 
in heaven and in earth, it's the same principle. It's named by that one name. That's Yahshua the Messiah. And the founder said on SoundCloud, look, didn't Yahshua say in John 5, 43, I'm come in my father's name? And the audience said, yes. And he quoted it. I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not, the disobedient. Receive him not, right? Mm -hmm. I can't quote it now. And yeah, I, mm -hmm. Go ahead, read it for me. I'm sorry, y'all. Go ahead. I am, I am coming come, go in ahead, my Jeff. father's name, and ye mm -hmm. receive me not. Let mm -hmm. another come in his own name, him ye will receive. Let another come in his, home, his own name, him ye will receive, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that Jesus came in his own name, right? Right. Because there's no similarity between Jesus, Lord, and God. You understand? No similarity between Buddha and all the rest of those, those uh, false gods. You get what I'm saying? Idol gods. They they may not be stone and 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 and, and metal and all that kind of stuff, but they still idol gods. It's sitting up in the hearts and mind of the disobedient. You understand? Of the wicked. You get it? But he said it. He said, "Now Yahshua." comes in his father's name because you got Yahweh and you got Yahshua. So he said now Yahshua come in his father's name but you right? Talking about his bride, talking about those translated into the kingdom got to come in his name and it's the same family. You get it? So Yahshua come in Yahweh's name you got Yahweh, Yahshua and, and the bride, whom we are, the obedient in Yahshua, is coming in his name. So the whole family in heaven and earth is named by that one name, and that's the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm talking about? Oh, my goodness. It is beautiful, you see. Mm -hmm. So now when you go back there, we read over there in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, you know, that all these things happen to Moses and the children of Israel as an example unto us. Mm -hmm. Right, that we don't lust after evil things that they lusted after, and we don't make the mistakes and area errors that they made. Right? right. So now, guess what happened down in the land of Egypt when when Joshua he was down in Egypt for thirty years before he commissioned Moses at the burning bush to come down there in the land of Egypt. You got the great Creator in a physical body appeared down there in the land of Egypt, right? A full-grown man, 30 years of age, walking around there in Egypt for 30 years before he called Moses down there. And when he was delivered out, I'm talking about the children of Israel was delivered out of Egypt through the divided waters of the Red Sea and everything that happened in the wilderness and all that kind of stuff. And, 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 and when Joshua, uh, the son of Nun, took off the flesh, right, he was 110. So that's how you know he was 30 when he appeared in Egypt. He was down there for 30 years before he commissioned Moses to come down there where he was. You get what I mean? Because he's 110. That's what? That's 30 years in Egypt. That's 40 years in the wilderness. And that's 40 years in Canaan's land. That's 110. <laughs> get it? Only the creator can appear at 30 stay there for 30 years, come out and still be 30. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Only the creator can do that. You get what I'm saying? So that was the great creator down there in the land of Egypt, in, in incognito, in the background. He's the one that's causing everything to happen down there. And that's a war down there between Yahweh Elohim and Pharaoh and his host. Yeah, got a circuit there. You understand what I'm saying? Yahshua's down there. He met with Aaron and, and Moses in the tent there and telling them what the, the say to Pharaoh and whatnot. And in the fifth chapter, he goes in and, and tells Pharaoh what thus said Yahweh. And Pharaoh say, I don't know Yahweh and neither am I going to let them go. Right? So now you got 10 devastating plagues poured out. But the children of Israel looking at Moses, they don't see Yahushua, the son of Nun down there. You see? Uh, uh, as you picked it up over there in Hebrews, that Yahshua is the author and finisher of our faith. They don't see him down there. 
They don't know who he is. You understand? He was the one walking around observing uh, their, their bondage and observing how they're being beat with the lash and all that. That's why when he appeared unto Moses, he told them that uh, I am come down to deliver them because that's what he told Abraham he was going to do to deliver them. He said, I have heard that cry by reason of the taskmasters and I know their sorrow because I'm come down. You understand? Oh my goodness. So now the point is he got Moses out front as the front man. So the children of Israel, they looking at Moses down there in the land of Egypt. But it was Joshua all the time fighting those battles down there with the 10 devastating plagues. The elements are Yahweh's army. You get what I mean? So you got a war in heaven as the previous speaker was talking about. And Yahshua said, let my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You understand? So if you had a war in heaven, you got to have a war on the earth plane. You get what I'm saying? Down there in the land of Egypt. And, he, and this is about delivering the children of Israel, the one son, his one son. He got to deliver him out. You see? And he's delivering them out by a mighty hand and, and, and bringing them out on eagle's wings. You get what I mean? So they looking at Moses down there in the land of Egypt, but Yahoshua or Yahshua, the son of Nun, he's the one fighting the battles down there against Pharaoh and his host. Then they delivered through the divided waters of the Red Sea. They still looking at Moses, but it's Yahshua that fought their battles even in the wilderness. Remember the battle they had in the wilderness and Aaron and her had to hold Moses' arms up, making that why? And long as that Y was up, and you got Aaron, that's the Y A, and you got her, that's the H, that's Yah. And long as it is manifest, Yah being manifest, they win in the battle. But when his arms got weak and come down, they begin to lose the battle. They had to prop their hands back up. You understand? And Yahshua was fighting the battles in the wilderness. So he fought the battles in, in Egypt, he fighting the battles in the wilderness. But they looking at Moses in Egypt. They looking at Moses in the wilderness. But it was Joshua all the time. You get it? So when it was time to cross that Jordan to go uh, 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 and, and to, to get their natural inheritance, Moses can't take them over. Joshua got to take them over. You understand? Because they can't have flesh in their eyes. You're looking, oh, Moses, Moses. Mo ain't wasn't even about no Moses. You get what I'm talking about? Uh-uh. So Moses is not allowed to go. He got to go up um, into Mount Nebo and, 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 and take the flesh off and, and go on into the kingdom in Yahshua. You understand what I mean? Resting. You follow me? He could look over into the promised land, but he can't, can't, he can't, he can't go over. Because Yahshua got to take them on into Canaan's land, typifying that, you know, going into a Canaan's land and they getting their natural inheritance, right? is a type and a shadow. They're getting Jerusalem beneath, if you will. You understand? In a type and in a shadow of going into immortality. You get it? So Yahshua was the one got to take him across that Jordan for Israel to get their natural inheritance, which is a type of going into immortality. Yahshua got to take him over there. He got to fight the battles over there too. You get it? So Yahshua fought in Egypt, Yahshua fought in the wilderness, and Yahshua is fighting in Canaan's land. You understand? Moses wasn't doing a thing, and none of them other folks. You understand? They were farmers, you understand, and herdsmen. They ain't know nothing about no fighting. Yahshua fought the battles. You get what I mean? So now, at the brink of the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, we get ready to cross that Jordan using words. You understand? We're going into immortality. Dr. Kinley can't take us over. Huh? You looking at him. No, no, no. He's, he's not. It is not Dr. Kinley. It is not Dr. whatever name you want to put on it. You understand what I'm talking about? It's Dr. Yahshua the Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the one got to take us across the Jordan into that immortality. We mm -hmm. cannot be looking at flesh and blood. That's why Yahshua is is, 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 is taking the brethren home. You understand? Got to take Dr. Uh, uh, Oliver Gill home and, and Lejeune home and Dr. Jacqueline Roundtree Mixon home and Dr. Uh, 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 Freddie Allen home. You understand what I'm saying? See? Because many are, was looking at the flesh. 
You understand what I mean? Uh uh, you can't have flesh in your eyes. You got to see Yahshua because he is the one. Yash has always been Yahshua all the way through. You get what I'm saying? So if you see Yahshua fighting their battles all the way through in that migration, we making the same migration, sitting in our seats in class. You get what I mean? And we got to make that same migration spiritually and psychologically in our hearts and minds. And it's Yahshua taking us all the way through fighting our battles all the way through, y'all. You understand? So when we go on over into immortality, Yahshua got to take us on over there. You get what I'm talking about? You see, not no man. And that's why uh, 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 the Holy Spirit and Paul said, who is Saul? And who is this one? And who is that one? Except for ministers by which you believe. But they're not the Savior. You understand what I'm saying? Yahshua the Messiah, he only. That's why it says over there in Philippians 2 and 9, you see, and we're down to almost about five minutes now, you see, that Yahweh highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Yahshua the Messiah, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And you're going to do it to the glory of Yahweh too. You get it? And that's why the Holy Spirit over there in Acts 4 and 12, that there's salvation in one name. That's the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And the whole family in heaven and earth shall be named by that one name, Yahshua the Messiah, because he's the one that spilled his blood. You get what I'm saying? See? Oh, my goodness. And technically, he spilled his blood in heaven. Because then we read in Revelations that they overcame the devil by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the lamb. You get it? And you read in Revelations that their robes were washed white in the blood of the lamb those robes represent the souls of men souls of the obedient being washed white in the blood of the lamb you get it and all that's by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua and Messiah so you got that old law dedicated with blood so you got the new law written in our hearts and mind is dedicated dedicated with the blood of Yahshua and Messiah but it's spiritual blood down here now you get what I mean and we're being washed in the water by the word See, that's the blood and the water. You understand what I mean? See? And by the preaching of the gospel, Yahshua Messiah, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. All of it spiritual now. You get what I'm talking about? See? And we got to die, right? See, then Paul, I'm uh, not Paul, uh, 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 John the Baptist said, I must decrease that Yahshua may increase. Mm -hmm. We got that stuff saying that we got to decrease, y'all. You understand? Me, myself, and I got to die. You get what I'm saying? That Yahshua may grow in grace in our hearts and in our minds, you know? So technically, it's not Sheree, it's not Jackie, it's, it's not, you understand, uh, 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 none of us. You understand what I'm saying? Dr. Turner or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? All y'all, my brethren, I love so dearly. It, 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 all whatever our names are, that is not the name we're going to be called when we're going into immortality. We're going to be bearing Yahshua's name. <laughs> you get it? Because the whole family, heaven and earth, is named by that one name, and that's the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Okay? So now, uh, get going over there and get Colossians. And, and I know I, I, I tell you, I didn't really do it no justice, the scriptures that were read. But going over there to Colossians, I want a one and, uh, give me one and 13. And then... Uh, and then I read two or three verses, then we'll drop down to 26. Colossians 1 and 13. Mm -hmm. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So and he has delivered us from the power of darkness. You see, remember he was talking about those demons that, that lost the, the, the first estate. You understand? They 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 do everything they can to deceive us to lead us astray and uh, dr killing said it uh, uh in the in the uh, elohim book in the introduction that that old devil and his imps are always present to lead us in the wrong direction you understand what i'm saying because they know they can't go back they're they're kicked down into everlasting chains of darkness never to return so so then his job is to try to pull down as many souls as he can into the pit with him, if you will. You understand? And he and he's after the sons of Yahweh through Yahshua. That's what he wants. Oh, I see that there. Thank you very much. The five minutes. Thank you. You see what I'm saying? So now he has, but Yahshua has delivered us 
from the power of darkness. And you can see how he delivered Israel. That's a type and a shadow. He delivered them out of Egypt. He delivered them out of the wilderness. He delivered them on into their natural inheritance. Joshua, the son of Nun, in the institution did that, teaching us that Yahshua is the one that's delivering us from Satan and his host, which is the true darkness. He's delivered us from that darkness. He's delivered us from that death. He's delivered us from that deception because we were all deceived. It says it in Revelations, the previous week had it read that he deceived the whole world. You understand? But he delivered us from that. Talking about Yahshua Messiah. Read on. Colossians. Colossians 1 and 13. Read it again. 13. 13. Thank you. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? Oh my, my goodness. Did you hear that? And has trans delivered us from darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's why we in the fourth age call the present kingdom age. The spiritual kingdom on earth, that, that's those full of the Holy Spirit down here now. We're the spiritual assembly and the body of Yahshua. That's right now. You see what I'm saying? Holy Spirit through faith. And faith is Yahshua the Messiah. You get it? So he delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Right now, present tense. Read. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Did y'all hear that? Whom we have, I'm sorry to interrupt. Whom we have redemption through Yahshua's blood. Read. Who is the image of the invisible L, the firstborn that, of every creature. Yes, that's good, sweetie. Now drop down to 26 because we're out of time. Verse 23. 26. Excuse me. Verse 26. Even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. Of Hold it. Gentiles. Whom Yahweh will make known. There's that known again. That's eternal life. Whom Yahweh will make known, read, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? Which, which will is. make known the riches of the mystery of his glory. See, all the mysteries of Yahweh revealed by the divine vision and revelation, which is what? To whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, the hope of glory. The Messiah in you, the hope of glory. And Dr. Kinley added, the only hope of glory. So let's just hold up each other's arms, encourage one another, help us together one with the other, you understand? And just hold on just a little while longer because when we go into immortality, we ain't got to be bothered with the devil no more. You understand? We ain't got to be worried about the fiery darts being shot at us no more. You understand? When we when we go into immortality, you understand? We Listen, it's going to be holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And we're going to be bothered with that bad boy no more. You understand? We're going to be reconciled with our brethren that have taken the flesh off and just resting in the ultimate instance saying, how long, how long? You understand? And we're going to be all glorified together at the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. And you got to really be looking at something because like Peter said, seeing that the earth and, and the elements and the galaxies and all that's going to be dissolved and burning up and all that kind of stuff. And you're going to be hastening toward that great day. You got to be looking at something. Say, boy, we got some, we got some glory. He gonna show his his goodness and his grace toward us. Work. You understand what I'm saying? You see? Oh, it's wonderful. So all praises and all glory going to Yahweh our Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Doctor Williams. We'd like to cordially invite our visitors and friends to join us 
for the YouTube broadcast of our Zoom classes on Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 7.30 until 9.30. On Sunday, please join us at our class building at 308 Montgomery Avenue from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m., which is also broadcast on YouTube. Participants, please remain muted until the host has ended our YouTube broadcast. We will conclude today's session with the benediction taken from Jude, verses 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. <laughs>